the symbolism of the fox, jackal and coyote. The symbolism of the fox, jackal and the coyote is similar. All are symbolically tricksters, but there are key and important differences. In mythology, a trickster is anyone, a god, goddess, person or anthropomorphic animal who disobeys normal rules and conventional behaviour, including bunnies. They can be sly and cunning, breaking the rules of men, the gods and nature. But the coyote and the jackal were somewhat admired for their daredevil pranks and occasional, unintentional, but ultimately positive effect. Whereas the fox has attracted less positive symbolism and to it has been added thieving and dishonesty and malicious acts with no positive effects. Both jackal and coyote can be funny and brave and their role in overturning established systems is regarded as positive and sacred in many societies as they challenge the misuse of power. The fox does not enjoy this symbolism. It is symbolically wily and deceitful without the saving graces of humour. But Japan has the legends of Kitsune, a nine-tailed fox. Kitsune in the literal sense is a Japanese word for fox, and here the symbolism is nowhere near as negative. The Irish word for fox is Seanach, for example, and it is believed that the word shenanigans could come from the Irish for, I play the fox. So the big question is why has the symbolism of the fox become so negative? when originally the symbolism of all three, the fox, the jackal and the coyote, was intended to be positive. And one of the places we can look for an answer is the story of Chanticleer and the fox. Chanticleer and the fox is a fable found in a number of medieval collections dating as far back as the 12th century. It appears, for example, in the Reynard cycle under the title How Reynard Captured Chanticleer the Cock. The fable describes how the cock Chanticleer, who lives with his three wives, is forewarned in a dream of his capture by a predator. He disregards the dream against the persuasion of his favourite, Binti. But eventually, the two creatures meet, and Rena overcomes the cock's initial fear by describing the great admiration he had for the singing of Chanticleer's father. If the son is to equal his father, he explains, he must shut his eyes as he stretches his neck to crow. But when Chanticleer obliges, the fox seizes him and makes a run for the woods with the farm workers and a mastiff in pursuit. But Chanticleer now turns the tables and urges the fox to turn round and defy them. But when the fox opens his mouth to do so, Chanticleer flies up to the safety of a tree. Thus the entire fable is about the dangers of ignoring prophetic dreams and feminine intuition, as well as the gullibility of masculine pride and overdeveloped ego. And here we have the problem in a nutshell. The negative traits of human beings were anthropomorphized, a story created using animals to describe human weaknesses, and the poor animal gets landed with the negative symbolism. In other words, instead of the story being recognised as a parable of human faults, people took the story literally 
and now wrongly associate an innocent animal with those traits. Disney and Pinocchio The film industry has been very quick to use animals in its cartoons, and they have been equally guilty of prolonging this injustice. The fox as a symbol was in Disney's 1940 animated feature film, Pinocchio. J. Worthington Fowlfellow, also known as Honest John, was a con artist fox who regularly swindled the residents of a small village with the aid of a cat called Gideon. Today, we might use the term a snake oil salesman. And thereby, the fox loses all its tricks to positive symbolism and acquires an almost entirely negative persona. And this has its consequences, as many people in the West look on a fox as vermin and kill them. And few oppose this because the anthropomorphism, the attribution of human traits, emotions or intentions to non-human entities, has been so effective. Bad press or justified? In the wild, all three, fox, jackal and coyote, are simply predators. And all three are indeed very intelligent predators. All three are exceptionally attractive creatures. All three are playful. All three are ingenious in their ability to adapt to many environments. including deserts, and urban settings, and foxes, although never tame, can become habituated to man in order to exploit them. But they do kill chickens, and can wipe out an entire hen hut in one go and eat none of them. But then so can mink, and mink are by far the more destructive of the two. For a chicken farmer wishing to support free-range chickens wandering the fields, the fox is an enemy, which may be one reason why the fox has attracted such negative symbolism. There have been efforts by some to romanticise the fox, emphasising its dog-like characteristics and beauty. But the fox is a most effective predator, and to characterise it as an untamed dog is actually belittling the fox's capabilities and principal role in nature. It is a key predator. It can kill virtually anything around its size or smaller. mice and squirrels, rabbits, although hares present more of a challenge, all sorts of birds, in this case a magpie, and coyotes can kill cats. This one has a feral cat. Foxes tend to go for kittens because they can't climb trees. Even fish! And it will happily scavenge like a vulture on the remains of any animals killed by others. This is why those societies that recognise the importance and value of predators in keeping the balance of nature intact simply accept all three as they are. Only those completely out of tune with nature go to the two extremes of extermination or domestication. A fox is no different to a cat. 
if it has already gorged itself on human leftovers, supplied food from dustbins, waste tips, or peanut butter sandwiches supplied as a treat, it has no need to eat the animal it kills. But the instinct is still there to kill it, if it is fair game. As such, the general and common symbolism all three have acquired is unfair to a simple animal playing its role in nature. The Constellation of Vulpecula But there is a constellation for the fox whose symbolism is well worth exploring. It was originally known as Vulpecula cum Ansara, the fox and the goose. Vulpecula is a diminutive of Latin vulpes, fox. The red fox is vulpes, vulpes. The goose was pictured in the jaws of the fox, but the goose is no longer officially in the sky. And to understand the tragedy of this, one needs to know the symbolism of the goose. The goose and the swan are both symbolically mystics. But the goose is a trainee mystic, more gullible, more naive. As such, this symbolism is about the persecution of aspiring mystics. But who by? Religion versus mystics. Once Christianity had been introduced, the fox was sometimes used as the symbol of false piety. A hypocrite, in other words. Reynard can often be found dressing up as a religious figure or pretending to be pious. So at a basic level, it is a warning to the spiritual trainee to be wary of false doctrines. The Gnostics Admonition of Solon Fools you are treading in the footsteps of the fox. Can you not read the hidden meaning of these winning words? The fox may also symbolize a cleric of some sort who goes through the motions but only does it to trap the unwary mystic in order to betray them and have them killed. The fox is a crafty and deceitful animal. When it wants to catch birds to eat, the fox rolls in red mud, so it appears to be covered in blood. It then lies apparently lifeless. Birds, deceived by the appearance of blood and thinking the fox to be dead, land on it and are immediately devoured. Blood is symbolically spirit input. This, if one is covered in blood or symbolically drink blood, one is a mystic being. But the fox uses false blood to deceive. Still a hypocrite, but a really dangerous one. The message to the mystic or follower of the spiritual path was quite clear. Beware those in authority who appear to be genuine, even favourable, but are actually treacherous. A mice record is a small wooden attachment on the underside of a folding seat in a church. It provide a measure of comfort during long hours of standing for prayer. Misericordia literally means an act of mercy. In England, some of the best can be found at Ely, Exeter, Lincoln and Winchester cathedrals, at Malvern Priory and at Ludlow and Boston churches but they were also used to carve out hidden symbolic messages to those who were on the spiritual path. And a very frequent message is to beware the symbolic fox, all you innocent but aspiring geese. Semper peccator, semper justice, ever sinning, ever righteous. So Germain Dietelen sums up the verdict of African folk wisdom upon this creature. Penguin Dictionary of Symbols. 
But Jane, on a more positive note, it can also mean a wily old fellow who, by rhetoric, challenges the beliefs of all these aspiring mystics. A genuine trickster, in other words. Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll, You are old, Father William. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. Yet you finished the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife, and the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. You are old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough, said his father. Don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. <laughs> 